All right, this is OpenStax U.S. History, Chapter 10, Section 5, The Tyranny and Triumph of the Majority. So probably the most important commentator of the changing uh, political system in the United States, the shift towards a more democratic system, was Alexis de Tocqueville. He was a French noble who traveled to the United States. Uh, his purpose was really to look after the prison system, but he became very fascinated in the political changes taking place. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that in terms of like the global perspective, uh, the French Revolution was defeated. Uh, Napoleon's armies surrendered, and what was going on in Europe was kind of a reversion of a lot of the democratic changes that, take, that took place. Um, in the French Revolution, the French people beheaded King Louis and instituted a new political system. Well, when Napoleon was defeated, all of these kings, uh, not the ones who were beheaded, but a lot of kings and queens retook their positions. There was sort of a reversion. And uh, at the time, you know, the United States was really seen as kind of pushing the, uh, the barriers when it came to democratic change. The book that he wrote was Democracy in America, so we might call this book by Tocqueville. And, uh, you know, in it, he really just sort of commentates about the United States at the time. Uh, he says on the one hand that, you know, democracy is a great thing, uh, that he believes that in the course of time, even though monarchs reclaim their thrones in Europe, that eventually democracy will take over. And one of the good things about it is, uh, you know, the, the putting of people equally before the law. So we might call this a triumph of democracy. And of course, what he's referring to, especially given his noble backgrounds, is the way that really prior to the French Revolution, the law was really based off privileges that different estates um, had different law codes to follow. You know, he's not really commenting on the um, differences in race, for example, that play out in the United States, but rather things like class and noble bloodline. But at the same time, Tocqueville was also very concerned about what democracy might bring, and that was the tyranny of the majority, and that would be the ability for the majority uh, we'll change that ability for the majority. I'll scroll down a little bit. To impose its will on the minority. In other words, the ability for a majority of Americans, whatever that majority may be, to essentially strip away the rights or impose their will on the various minority populations. So with this shift to democracy, there were things to be uh, maybe uh, uh, hopeful about, but there were also some things to be concerned about, or pretty, right, minority. Uh, however, at the conclusion of this you know, dramatic political change, namely the 1840s, a brand new political system had emerged at this point, Andrew Jackson had served two terms in office. His successor, Martin Van Buren, his vice president, also served a term. But by the election of 1840, the kind of spirit of Jackson and the support behind Jackson began to really sort of wane, and his opponents were gaining more and more support. By this time, the second party system was firmly in place. This consisted of two new political parties, the Democrats and the Whigs. So we might call this the Democrats and Whigs. And again, just for review, a party system is any time that two political parties are competitive throughout the United States. Uh, the first party system being Federalists and Democratic Republicans. That came to an end. Now it was the Democrats and Whigs. And by 1840, voter participation had increased dramatically. Many more people were involved in politics than they were in the past. 
Initially, the Democrats and the Whigs really stood for either your support or opposition to Andrew Jackson. Again, by this time, Andrew Jackson is no longer really in the picture. He took the um, uh, kind of precedent that Washington established, only served for two terms, stepped down. And uh, these two political parties then became kind of their own, uh, you know, their own vehicles. They came to have particular stances on particular positions, party platforms, um, you know, everything that kind of goes into a modern political party. Probably their biggest difference was where they stood on economic growth, namely the American system. Again, that's the idea that there ought to be some sort of internal improvements economically in the United States, especially in terms of investment. Uh, the Whigs in general were in favor of the American system. The Democrats were against the American system. Uh, there were other issues that these two particular parties made their stances on, but this was probably the biggest one. And in terms of membership, you know, generally speaking, the Whigs tended to be, you know, wealthy, while the Democrats or the Democrats really, you know, sort of stood for the the common man or common commoner sort of position. Now, 1840 becomes an important election because this is the first Whig victory, you know, really until the Whigs can, we'll say, in the White House for the presidency, you know, really until the Whigs can uh, win a national election, um, you know, they're not necessarily viable up until that point. And the Whigs took a page out of the Democrats and Martin Van Buren's book and Andrew Jackson's book, and that was to appeal to the masses. They ran William Henry Harrison, who was the war hero, again, very popular war hero from 1812, specifically the Battle of Tippy Canoe. Tippy Canoe, which was where the United States battled Tecumseh in his uprising. He ran with John Tyler, who would be his vice president. And so the slogan for William Henry Harrison in the 1840 election was Tippy Canoe. Again, the, the you know general uh, won the Battle of Tippy Canoe and Tyler too. We'll just call this a slogan for this. And uh, not only running a war hero who had that popularity, but also portraying William Henry Harrison as a champion of the common person. The log cabin campaign was what Harrison's presidential campaign was called. So we'll say this was Harrison's uh, presidential campaign. And the reason why they called it the log... Uh, log cabin campaign was because the idea was that William Henry Harrison was born and grew up in a log cabin, which was a symbol of how kind of the common class was raised rather than a privileged background, which was actually the case. So Harrison's presidential campaign to portray him as a quote unquote common man. You know, look at this guy. He grew up in a log cabin just like you. You ought to vote for him. And with that, Harrison and the Whigs won the presidency. Uh, and just sort of a fun fact here, interestingly, sort of trivia stuff. William Henry Harrison is the president who served for the shortest amount of time. During his inauguration, he gave a like five-hour speech in the cold rain, caught pneumonia, and died very shortly afterwards, only serving... Um, I don't know, maybe like a, a, maybe a month or so. I don't know exactly the amount of time, but a very, very short amount of time. So fun fact, trivia question, the president who served the shortest term, William Henry Harrison.